In just two weeks, I'll be finally getting back to Six Flags Magic Mountain over in Valencia, California. Because of this, I thought it'd be a good time to re-release my Magic Mountain rankings, with the inclusion of Tatsu, West Coast Racers, and Apocalypse, as well as all four kiddie coasters. So with that, here are the top 20 coasters at Six Flags Magic Mountain. Number 20, Magic Flyer. Only about a handful of enthusiasts have actually been Magic Flyer, as the maximum height requirement is extremely low. Because of this, there's no real way I can judge this coaster, but when looking at the ride stats, as well as just seeing it off-ride, this is certainly the worst coaster in the park. Number 19, Speedy Gonzales Hot Rod Racers. There's not a whole lot I can personally say about the ride, as it's about as small as the kitty ghoster can get. The drop doesn't really pull any force, and the helix is pretty boring. There's definitely no airtime found anywhere, making this a perfect starting coaster for kids. Number 18, Canyon Blaster. A lot of the same things I say about Speedy Gonzales can also be applied here, with the main difference being that this ride is actually thrilling. The ladders can surprisingly be super strong, and the last few bunny hills do in fact give quick pops of airtime. Number 17, Roadrunner Express. The last kitty coaster on the list is honestly more of a family coaster, being Roadrunner Express. The drop is decently sizable, and the turns can pull some very minor forces. There are also various theming props scattered around the ride, so look out for those the next time. Number 16, Gold Rusher. Here we have the first major coaster on the list, which is also coincidentally the oldest operating coaster in the park. This is a super unique mine train, as it's definitely a terrain based layout. During your ride, you'll pass under Superman's launch track and get super close to Full Throttle's loop. There's not a whole lot else to the ride, but it's definitely a family favorite within the park. Number 15, New Revolution. This is actually a piece of coaster history, as it was the first modern day roller coaster to feature a vertical loop. As for the ride experience itself, the whole layout consists of small drops and tight turns, with the exception of that loop. It's not the most thrilling experience you'll find at the park, but it's honestly just really enjoyable. Number 14, Ninja. While this is the only aero suspended coaster I've ridden, I can personally say I love the ride. The swing is super enjoyable, and when the ride's running its best, you may nearly flip upside down. Another thing I love about the ride is how you start at the top of the mountain and work your way all the way down during the ride duration. Number 13, Viper. Keep in mind that I haven't ridden this coaster since early 2019, so a rewrite is definitely necessary for me to fairly rank the ride. As for right now, I can't say anything for sure, but I remember my experience being rough and pretty boring. I've now heard the ride pulls a crazy amount of G's, and it's pretty smooth for its age, so I can't wait to give Viper a second chance. Number 12, Riddler's Revenge. This is another coaster I didn't necessarily like, but the rewrite would definitely change that. I found Riddler's to be a super uncomfortable experience, but apparently I didn't place the restraint where I was supposed to. Anyway, the ride does give some pretty good forces from what I remember, and the station soundtrack is a masterpiece. Number 11, Scream. People always hate on Scream, but come on, it's a fun ride. The inversions are super snappy, and the drop's pretty enjoyable. Both helixes also pull decent forces, and yes, the ride is rather noticeable, but that doesn't really take away from the ride experience. Number 10, West Coast Racers. I don't know why I don't think very highly of this ride, but it's honestly just meh. Sure, it's super fun, and the racing aspect is great, but it's definitely not the most thrilling, and the launchers are pretty weak. The comfort colors are also pretty annoying, and easily gone the way during my ride. Number 9, Superman Escape from Krypton. This coaster wasn't only the first to reach 400 feet, but it was also the first to reach the 100 mile per hour barrier. Sure, you can say the launch isn't the most forceful, but it is what it is, and it definitely still feels fast. The vertical spike is also generally thrilling, at least on the right track. Number 8, Batman the Ride. What an intense ride. You're guaranteed to gray out multiple times, as a result, the ride never slows down. You take these elements with incredible speed, making them super whippy. This is also known to be one of the top tier Batman clones, so make sure to give it a ride if you find yourself at the park. Number 7, Goliath. I'm one in a handful of enthusiasts that'll probably rank Goliath this high as I am, but the ride is honestly just a ton of fun. The first drop is definitely intimidating, especially on your first ride. People seem to hang Goliath just for lacking the airtime, but that drawn that hill does give a second or two. Plus, the ride isn't dependent on negative Gs, its main focus is definitely on speed and intensity. Number 6, Apocalypse the Ride. I've only ran this once in the front row, so I don't have a very good judgement on the ride, although I'll try my best. Yes, the ride is underwhelming, and it's nowhere near as good as some other GCIs. <coughs> anyway, the ride still delivers fantastic airtime, great lather rolls, and an adrenaline rush all the way to the end of the layout. Number 5, Full Throttle. There's so much to love about this ride, as it accomplishes so much in such a short amount of time. In just over a minute, you'll experience three different launches, North America's largest vertical loop, and you're guaranteed to have an overall fun experience. Number 4, Tatsu. 
Tatsu gives one epic sensation of a flying experience, which is perfectly done with the rides placement. The ride's definitely one of the more graceful ones in the park until you reach that enormous pretzel loop. Like seriously, that thing is intense. Other than that, Tatsu is a great ride with some great forces. Number 3. Wonder Woman Fly the Courage One night open to the public, Wonder Woman's array a near-identical clone of Jersey Devil over its Six Flags through adventure, and if the ride runs anything like its processor, this will be a great addition for the park. It definitely has the potential to be a top-tier ride in the park, with its airtime, sudden jolts, and decent theming. Number 2. Twisted Colossus While many consider it to be the best ride in the park, Twisted Colossus is a true masterpiece of a ride. Right from the beginning, you have an incredible pre-lift section, and that's just a small segment of the ride. The airtime you receive stays super strong during the whole ride, and there's nothing better than a double dueling ride. Number 1. X2 What an intense coaster. Your first ride in this piece is like nothing else. You'll flip forwards, backwards, upside down, sideways, left, right, and all sorts of motions. While the ride is rather rough, it honestly just adds to the intensity, and I have to give X2 a shout out for recently turning 20 years old, as well as staying my favorite coaster for 3 whole years. Thank you all so much for watching today's video. Magic Mountain is definitely a top tier Six Flags park, and clearly one of the best in the world. Anyway, that's all I have for you guys today, look forward to more uploads coming soon, and I'll see you in the front row.